If you are new to the channel, then please do not forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Please like and give your comment also if you like the content and the hard work. Hello guys, welcome back. So in this video, we will see why I will use the Psychomod interface first and then later on we'll understand how to implement this interface. Now to understand this, uh, let me give you a very simple example. Let's say you have a button and then I'm telling you that write a click event on this button so that when it is clicked, a message box appears saying that button is clicked. Very simple, right? And then you will say that, okay, this is very simple. I can write a click event of my button and then there is a handler and then I can write the, the message that you want. But then I will say in WPF, you are breaking the whole concept why it came into picture because you're writing your code in the code behind and then your code is very tightly coupled to the UI. So later on, if I want to use my UI in a different application, I won't be able to use it because every time the same click event will be called. Let's understand this with a slide. Any application involved, let's say a Windows application consists of three things, UI, logic and data and nothing else. Let's say you have a web application and you want to use the same UI which you wrote for Windows application. Then in WPF, you should be able to use it because WPF is designed in that way only. So you should be able to use the same UI and later on, if you want to use the same logic and same data, you should be able to use that also. And this is what uh, we are deep decoupling uh, the UI logic and data to each other. And uh, let's say if you have mobile application, then you should be able to use, of course, the same UI logic data for mobile application also. And that is the reason why you should avoid writing click event because uh, with this you are very tightly coupled to the UI. And then this command property of a button control come in, comes into picture. And then we uh, comes down to the point then how to implement this I command interface. Okay, so let's understand uh, this with an example. Let's go to Visual Studio. So in code, I have this button control as you can also see from the visual. And to implement I command interface, you need a class which will be implementing that command I command interface. So let's uh, create the class. And uh, to create class, I am using this uh, new search window in Visual Studio 2019, which is very cool. You can you can see here that I typed folder, and then I can just create the folder. Let's name it as command, and then you select the command folder, and then write class you can create the class this is more powerful with visual studio 2019 let's name it as a button command and then uh, our right here i command interface to implement button command will be implementing this but it is not able to find it because i need a namespace so this is windows.input now it will be recognized now let's implement it, hover your mouse and then uh, implement this interface. It has three things, can execute changed and then this two method. Uh, one this and then this. Uh, let's talk about this can execute uh, changed event later on when I will talk about this parameter, command parameter. Let's focus on this two method. So can execute method is something uh, which talks about uh, when your button should be enabled or disabled. So if you let's uh, return true, I want my button to be enabled all the time. Here you can write your complex logic also based on which your button should be enabled and disabled. And here this execute method, this method uh, will be executed when your button will be clicked. But before that, let's write a view model. Again, use this search window and create a folder. Name it as uh, view model. And then uh, create a class. Uh, let's type again class and then uh, button view model okay now let's create a constructor to create constructor ctor and then tab tab and then uh, before that let's create a property of uh, the command that you just created your command is button command so write prop and then uh, tab 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 right button command you need the namespace and then give it a meaningful name button command come here 
and initialize this property new button command and pass the instance of view model come here and write a method which will be called when button will be clicked so write a method let's name it as on execute and then uh, just write message box dot show it is not able to recognize because again you need a namespace system dot windows and then write button is clicked that's it see here you can see the error is coming because uh, the command you wrote is not having any constructor so i can write ctor and then tab tab and then uh, uh, create a member variable for this so button view model you need to include the namespace here also and then you can just name it as a button view model and uh, to initialize it you need to give it a parameter in the constructor so button view model and then view model with this you can initialize your member variable button view model and then view model cool and you need to give a semicolon here come down and then call your method which you row root in the button view model button view model dot on execute okay so now when execute uh, will be called then your method which you wrote in the view model will be called and now the important step step you need to bind this property which is there in the view model to the command property which is there in the button control but before that you need to create the instance of your view model so that you can get the property from there and then you can bind to the command property command property you can see here okay but as I said before, you need to create the instance. So let's uh, first include the namespace because your view model is in a different namespace. So let's write I command and then you can find your view model namespace. And then in the resource section, let's create the instance. Very good. Uh, let's find the namespace name view model. And then you can find your class button view model. Give it a key. Key is basically creating the instance of uh, this class. Very good. You created the instance, and now you need to find this instance and then bind the property. So to do that, you you use the binding markup extension. Then set a source. My source is a static resource, and it's view model. You can find it here. Then find the property that you need to bind to. The property is button command. Button command. As I said, you need to bind this command. Cool. So I did it. Now when I will run the application and when button will be clicked, this command will come into picture and this button, uh, the function will be called. Let's run it. And then let's see this in action. Then you will understand it, how it is working. Now when I will click on my button, button is clicked. Okay. So with this uh, I command implementation, we could uh, decouple uh, the UI with the logic which is there in the view model. Okay. So with this we are done. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye bye.